Good evening, our big story tonight. You are so hot, America, and I mean that literally. The temperature was a balmy 60 degrees this afternoon in New York, just outside CNN studios. The average high temperature in December is normally 43. Warm weather's flooded the lower 48 states with 482 daily high temperature records across the country on Monday alone. Quite extraordinary, but is it evidence of man-made global warming? That's tonight's Battleground America. Joining me now are Bill Nye, the science guy, and Mark Morano. He's the publisher of ClimateDepot.com. Welcome to you both. Let me start with you, Thank you. and Mark Morano, if sure. I may. Uh, you are implacably opposed to the concept of man-made climate change. Why? We followed the evidence. Uh, there are quite literally hundreds of factors that influence global temperature. Everything from tilts of the Earth's axis to ocean cycles to water vapor, methane, solar system, the sun, cloud feedback, volcanic dust. The idea that CO2 is the tail that wags the dogs is not supportable. And if you go down and look at the scientific literature, we're finding reams of, do of data in new peer-reviewed studies showing the medieval and Roman warming periods as warm or warmer than today without our CO2 emissions. So what's happened here is the whole movement because now we've gone 16 years without global warming according to the UN data and they've now morphed into extreme weather and we have the absurd spectacle of people claiming that acts of Congress and the United Nations can control the weather and make hurricanes less nasty and make torne tornadoes less frequent which by the way none of them are showing any trends at all that are unusual okay Bill Nye your response? Well, we start talking about the facts. The, those uh, medieval those the warming facts. period and the Ro Roman you know, Roman warming period; those are just in Europe, and they're they're not representative. Both. Let's, to, let's see if we can agree, let's see if we can agree on a couple things. Do you agree that when I was a kid or when you were a kid, there was 340 parts per million of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere? Sure, carbon dioxide's Do rising. You What's your point? Okay. No. <clears throat> so here's the point: is it's rising extraordinarily fast. That's the difference between the bad old days and now. Is it's, Carbon it's dioxide much faster than ever in history, and so this so, trace. Uh, yeah, let him let him finish. No, no, so, uh, let him finish. That's that's it's the rate that's of great concern more than the actual. Uh, and what do you itself. put that rate down to, Bill? Oh, it's human activity. I mean, you go back. This is what I say all the time. So you look in the uh, ice, and you find bu tr bubbles of trapped gas from uh, 200 years ago, or let alone a thousand years ago. There's nobody running around with a hypodermic needle injecting bubbles of gas in ancient uh, ice cores. I mean, you, that's the ancient atmosphere in there. And so you can determine the composition of the ancient atmosphere exactly. This uh, medieval warming period is brought up quite often, but it was really a European phenomenon. And it's, it's not, it wasn't global. And what are the biggest factors, the man-made factors, creating the oh. acceleration uh, of CO2 in well, the atmosphere? The biggest thing is, uh, when I was nine years old, the Earth's population changed from 2.999 billion to 3 billion. Now it's, in my lifetime, it's now 7 billion people trying to live the way we lived in the developed, the way we live in the developed world. And it's just, we're just burning, car burning carbon and spewing carbon dioxide in the atmosphere at an extraordinary rate. Right, so Mark Morano, if there is a massively increased acceleration in CO2 in the atmosphere, at the same time that there's been a, a bigger than double the sizing of the population of the planet, why would that not be inexorably linked? Explain to me. Well, CO2 is rising. No one's disputing that. What Bill and I just did was waste everyone's time explaining that CO2 is rising. The question is, what impact does CO2 have on the weather? What impact does CO2 have on climate change? And that is where you look at the geologic record. We've had warmer periods where it's been with, higher, with lower CO2, and we've had colder periods with higher CO2. And you have to go way back for some of that. But the bottom line is hundreds of factors are, di are dictating our climate. The medieval warm period was both southern and northern hemisphere. On my website, there's literally, it demolishes the idea of a hockey stick, new peer-reviewed studies. So the idea that Bill Nye is just going around saying CO2 is up, therefore global warming is dangerous, we should be concerned. It's not. It's not dangerous. The bottom line is all these well, other let me, factors let me, dwarf okay, let me the effect of CO2. Let, let me jump in. How do you explain that the eastern seaboard, for example, is getting some of the warmest weather it's ever had, at the same well, time that California has been plunged into storm after storm in the last week, well, and you see we, that New York last month had the worst hurricane it's ever injured, and so on and so on. Sure, you know, how great. do you explain that we're getting so many of these freakish weather patterns if at the same time you've got all this I, extra CO2 in the atmosphere and all these people now guzzling no. up power and energy and emitting gases that weren't there before? No. Surely that is evidence, isn't it? 
No, you go to the peer-reviewed literature. You got, you're looking at anecdotal evidence. This is now the level of your daily horoscope. Oh, we, basically, global warmists like Bill Nye say, global warming will cause all, many bad weather events. And guess what? Bad weather events happen all the time. So people look and they say, look, there's more proof. There's a bad weather event. Bottom line, big tornadoes, F3 and larger since the 1950s, have dropped dramatically. Bottom line, we've gone the longest period without a major U.S. Category 3 or larger hurricane hitting the U.S. since at least 1900, maybe the Civil War. Bottom line, new stuff study in the journal Nature, peer-reviewed, no change in U.S. drought in the last 60 years. Bottom line, a new study out shows that drought has not changed in 85 to uh, Okay, let me give you a minute. Let, let, That's before a I, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let, wait, let me, let me add one more, shouting. let me add one more bottom line before I defer to <laughs> Bill Nye. He knows sure. more about this than I do. But another bottom line, the world is indisputably getting warmer. The UN Weather Agency said last week 2012 is on track to become one of the top 10 hottest years on record. Add all the weird climactic changes we're seeing. Yeah, well, you, Bill, over to you. This, is the, this will be the hottest two decades in, history, in recorded history. And so when you throw around a, a, a statement like the UN says it's not the hottest 20 years, They're I dead. really... I got to disagree with you. Maybe some surface data show that in certain cities. Well, here's my point to you, Mark, and it's, it's a straightforward one, really. If you are wrong, then the implications for the planet are utterly catastrophic. In other words, if you and the climate change... Well, let me finish. If the anti-climate change brigade win the argument and nothing is done because you convince people nothing needs to be done and you're wrong, then in 100, 200 years, will have caused devastation for the planet that will then be irretrievable. If, however, you are right in what you say, and this is unnecessary and overreaction and so on, what you're seeing is a bit of economic hardship in the short term not to deal all. with what may not be as big a problem as you think it is. Why it's the wrong argument? Because every proposal ever done, including the United Nations Kyoto Protocol, would not even detectively impact the temperatures, assuming you buy into their science. We're well, not we're talking about the temperature. Well, we're talking about a climate bill in the United States. President Obama was going around telling people it'll keep the planet four or five degrees cooler for our grandchildren. His own EPA said it wouldn't affect global CO2 levels, let alone temperature. And if you actually do, CO2 right is now the developing it, world's getting a thousand plus coal plants. They are one point three billion people don't have running water and electricity. If we actually go the route of trying to stop carbon-based energy, which has been their lifeline, which would lower infant mortality and long life expectancy, it would be the most immoral position you could take. So the bottom line is, even if the skeptics are wrong, the solutions that the global warming alarmists have proposed would have no detectable impact on climate. Let me let Bill Nye respond to that. If we, uh, if we were to begin to reduce carbon emissions, have the United States, for example, lead the way in this new technology, especially energy transmission, energy storage, electricity, we could change the world. We could get everybody uh, a much higher quality of life than they'd otherwise have. The problem is so many people live near the coasts. And these are they're very old economic reasons. People lived on rivers since the beginning of human history. So uh, as sea levels, see, as the world gets warmer, and I take it he doesn't disagree that the world's getting warmer, We've warmed the sea the actually the last gets ice bigger, Little and ice so uh, uh, ice is also falling off the ice sheets, uh, so that ice is up on land. So this is also going to cause the sea level to rise. So, for example, in the case of Sandy, which was not an especially big hurricane, the economic impact was $30 billion, mm. and that's in the developed world where we have the resources to deal with it. When you have people displaced on uh, continental scales, these are, we're not talking about a few people trying to get through a fence at a border between countries. We're talking about 30, tens of millions of people trying to move north, trying to move out of uh, Southeast Asia. You're going to have trouble. Where, so the sooner you get happening? started this on is, that problem, the better. These are all predictions well, based our on argument climate is models. To the, these predictions so, that Bill's going are based on climate I models. I appreciate that violate 81 out of 87 but, of the basic uh, principles of forecasting. So, Mark Morano, do you sure. accept that the ocean levels are rising? that the planet is getting hotter, that CO2 emissions have dramatically increased in the last 50 years. And ice sheets are size, shrinking. Ice sheets are shrinking and that the planet population is doubling and accelerating at a terrifying rate. And that the combination of all these things is likely to be a major problem for the next two or three generations. And therefore, 
doing nothing shouldn't really be a sensible, responsible option. Doing nothing. First of all, the United States did nothing. Our CO2 emissions are dropping as we move to fracking away from coal through technology. So the idea of doing nothing, there's nothing to do. The, the, the idea of, of a, there's no way you can solve a non-problem. Sea level has been rising since the end of the last ice age. Uh, there's no acceleration. Dutch Meteorological Institute said there's no acceleration. You can look at the data, the land-based data. I just, there's no acceleration. We just don't agree on the facts. Where so it goes to scary and where the horror story is are in all these predictions. And they come out and say it's worse well, than we thought. I respect, Why? Because look, the predictions uh, get scarier and scarier. Okay, I, look, I respect that you have views. I don't think they're facts. And there are many scientists who would take issue with you about the use of the word facts. Jack, I'm going to have to yes. wrap it up, I'm afraid. It's been a spirited Thank debate, you. and I appreciate you both coming on to Thank you. Mark Morano and Bill Nye. I'm sure it will rumble Thank on. Thank you.